The Mary Rose. Just the name conjures up images of powerful cannons, billowing sails and the might of the Tudor Navy. This wasn't just any ship, she was a beast, a floating fortress, a symbol of King Henry VIII's ambition. Launched in 1511, the Mary Rose was a cutting-edge warship, one of the first of her kind. She was designed to be faster, more maneuverable, and more heavily armed than anything else afloat. Imagine the scene at Portsmouth. The air crackles with excitement. Crowds gather to witness the launch of this magnificent vessel. Henry VIII himself is there, a king obsessed with power and prestige. The Mary Rose is his pride and joy, a ship fit for a king. But her story is not just one of glory, it's a tale of triumph and tragedy, of mystery and intrigue. The Mary Rose would go on to serve Henry faithfully for over three decades. She took part in numerous battles and skirmishes, helping to cement England's dominance at sea. From the rough waters of the English Channel to the coasts of France, the Mary Rose was a force to be reckoned with. But her story takes a dramatic turn on a fateful day in 1545. Henry VIII, the larger-than-life Tudor king, was obsessed with ships. He poured vast sums of money into building up the Royal Navy, transforming it into a formidable force. At the heart of this naval expansion was the Mary Rose. She was more than just a ship to Henry. She was a symbol of his power and ambition. Henry lavished attention on the Mary Rose. He personally oversaw her construction, demanding the finest materials and craftsmanship. Her guns were the most advanced of the age, capable of unleashing a devastating barrage. The king often sailed on the Mary Rose, inspecting her crew and marveling at her power. The Mary Rose was a regular visitor to the king's favorite palace at Greenwich. It's said that Henry would often climb to her top deck and gaze out at the Thames, imagining himself as master of the seas. The ship was a constant reminder of his ambition to make England a great naval power, but the relationship between Henry and his beloved ship also reveals a darker side to the king. He was known for his ruthlessness and his volatile temper. When the Mary Rose sank, some whispered that it was a sign of God's displeasure with the king. July 19, 1545. A hot summer's day off the south coast of England. The Solent, the narrow strait separating the Isle of Wight from the mainland, is alive with activity. A French invasion fleet is approaching, and Henry VIII's navy is ready to meet them head-on. At the heart of the English fleet is the Mary Rose, a veteran of many battles. The tension is palpable. English and French ships maneuver for position, cannons roar, and the air fills with smoke. The Mary Rose with her fearsome firepower is in the thick of the action, but then, disaster strikes. As the Mary Rose turns to fire a broadside, a sudden gust of wind catches her sails. The ship heals violently, water pouring in through her open gun ports. Within minutes she capsizes and sinks beneath the waves, taking hundreds of men with her. The disaster sends shockwaves through the English fleet. How could their most powerful ship, their pride and joy be lost so quickly? Oh. Section 4. Whispers in the Wind, Theories Behind the Sinking The sinking of the Mary Rose sent shockwaves through England. How could such a powerful ship, a symbol of Tudor might, vanish so suddenly? Theories abounded, some whispered of treachery, of French saboteurs or disgruntled English sailors. Others blamed poor seamanship, claiming the crew was inexperienced and overloaded the ship. One persistent theory is that the Mary Rose was top-heavy. Over the years, she had been modified and upgraded, with heavier guns added to her upper decks. This may have made her unstable, especially in rough seas. Another theory focuses on the gun ports. To maximize firepower, the Mary Rose's gun ports were located low on the hull. If these were left open in rough seas, water could easily flood the ship. Then there's the tacking theory. It's believed the Mary Rose was attempting to turn quickly into the wind, a maneuver known as tacking. If this maneuver was poorly executed or if a sudden gust of wind caught the sails at the wrong moment, it could have caused the ship to capsize. Whatever the cause, the sinking of the Mary Rose remains one of the most enduring maritime mysteries. Section 5. Voices from the Deep Survivor Testimonies and Accounts the sinking of the Mary Rose was witnessed by thousands. From the shores of the Solent, people watched in horror as the mighty warship disappeared beneath the waves. The few survivors who managed to escape the watery grave told tales of chaos and terror. Their accounts, though fragmented and often contradictory, provide valuable glimpses into the final moments of the Mary Rose. 
One survivor, a ship's carpenter, described the moment the ship went down, she heeled over so suddenly that there was no time to do anything. Men were thrown into the sea, screaming for help. I was lucky to grab hold of a piece of floating wreckage. Another survivor, a young sailor, spoke of the deafening roar as water rushed into the ship. It was like the sound of a thousand demons. Men were trampled in the rush to escape but there was nowhere to go. These first-hand accounts paint a vivid picture of the tragedy. They tell of heroism and despair, of desperate struggles for survival, and of the heartbreaking loss of so many lives. The survivors' stories also highlight the speed at which the disaster unfolded, leaving little time for escape.